When you look at Coral Reef and their 33 data centers, mostly around US and Europe, and you compare that with the rising demand of AI, you might think maybe this isn't so bad. I mean, they own 250,000 graphics cards. They must be doing well, right? When we talk about Coral Reef, we're not talking about a technology problem, but rather we're talking about a financial problem. In other words, the problem isn't whether Coral Reef has enough compute to meet the demand, but rather the problem is whether Coral Reef's financing structure can survive 2026 six despite the rising demand of AI. Today, we're going to analyze Core Reef's business model and look at their financial structure to see if Core Reef is in dire straits that could cause a broader market impact in the stock market. Welcome to Kale Bright's Code, where every second counts. Quick shout out to Zoe Computer, more on them later. Most people probably never heard of Core Reef until around 2025. Core Reef used to be a crypto mining business in 2017, and they repurposed their business from Atlantic Crypto to Core Reef in 2019. And back then, they only had three data centers. And after ChatGPT proved to the world that AI is here and we're just getting started, Core Reef started to expand heavily to the tune of billions of dollars in debt financing. And since then, this debt grew to be more than $14 billion, but in return, they did have more than 33 data centers across continents. And despite this huge rather precarious debt financing, Core Reef created five new billionaires with their IPO back in March 2025 that started at around $40 per share and had an all-time high of more than $183 per share. But again, when we talk about Core Reef, we're not talking about technology per se, but rather we're talking about timing because Core Reef is heading into the territory of being insolvent soon. Let's first look at the landscape of supply and demand in the AI industry to frame this more complicated comprehensively. Core Reef's biggest customer used to be Microsoft until Microsoft and OpenAI had a dispute over who should provide OpenAI's compute needs. And since around 2025, Core Reef's biggest customers were OpenAI, Meta, and some other smaller AI labs. You might be wondering why companies like OpenAI and Microsoft are using Core Reef's in the first place. I mean, if they're investing heavily into their own hyperscalers like Stargate, why do they need to use Core Reef? That's because building hyperscalers, as you can see here in New York City for scale, takes a long time to build. So new clouds like Core Reef serve an important function in bridging the gap until construction is finished. And it also allows Frontier Labs to continue innovating while meeting the growing demand from consumers. So if you look at it from the left to the right, we have accelerating growth in demand from consumers for AI applications like ChatGPT and Copilot, where ChatGPT garnered 1 million users in five days 100 million users in two months, and now they have more than 800 million weekly active users. This kind of demand in inference requires OpenAI to desperately grab as much as compute as possible from Core Reef, even if they don't end up using them. And not only do we have growing demand from users, we have growing competition from other frontier labs like Anthropic, XAI, and Google, all trying to force companies like OpenAI to have a huge reserve in compute to continue training neural models faster to not fall behind in competition. And all of this puts a huge pressure on the Frontier Labs who needs to relieve this pressure and Core Reef has been playing an important role in providing auxiliary compute for Frontier Labs like OpenAI and Meta. Now that we have a higher level view of the AI industry, let's now look at how Core Reef plays in this ecosystem. At the core, Core Reef is somewhat one layer removed from the consumer's AI applications and AI model innovations. So it's been Core Reef's best interest for competition in AI applications and AI models to continue since it'll create more demand for compute. But they're not entirely removed from this layer either. AI models tend to deprecate at around two years. For example, OpenAI released their 4.0 model back in May 2024, and they recently announced that they will be deprecating it in February 2026. So AI models have a life cycle around two years being in service until they are deprecated, and their life cycle will likely be shorter going forward since the pace of innovation is getting faster. But we also have deprecation on the hardware side as well. Graphics cards typically deprecate around four to six years of being in service, but that really depends on how you measure it. In fact, this is actually a huge point of contention in the industry 
Given that Core Weave tends to be very optimistic about their depreciation schedule for their chips to be at around six years, as opposed to other Neo clouds that put the same chip at around four years. We know this mostly from Michael Berry's opinion on this matter, that AI chips should be depreciating at a two year life cycle instead. But even if graphic cards do serve the entire six years in service, it doesn't necessarily mean what we're using these graphic cards will be the same across the board. For example, most Frontier Labs will want to use the newest AI chips when it comes to training. This is because when you look at AI competition among Frontier Labs, we're seeing new model releases every three to four months now. So we need to be training these models faster to stay competitive. So if you look at it from the value of utilization throughout the entire six years that they're in service, newer chips could be sold at a premium due to higher demand and limited supply. And as utilization becomes longer and newer chips replace older chips, utilizations among those chips will be then used for inference and other types of work while training will always be reserved for the newest chips preferably. Another perspective to keep in mind is that demand tends to spike up front since everybody wants to use the newest AI model. But as newer models releases are available, their demand will quickly taper off. So just like graphics card utilization and profit not being uniform across its entire life cycle for let's say six years, AI models also don't have uniform demand across the two years that they're in service. So what you see is that the tail end of the depreciation schedule for both the AI models and graphics cards is where Core Reef could lose a lot in margin and utilization since you have a lot of other Neo clouds offering similar service, possibly at a lower price. But thankfully in Core Reef's case, Nvidia pledged to spend around $6.3 billion in unused compute to make up as revenue for Core Reef. Okay, you might be wondering, how does all of this have to do with Core Reef's insolvency crisis in 2026? Is Core Reef going to be insolvent or not? But first, let's talk about Zo Computer. Here's the problem. You have files stored across Gmail, Google Drive, Notion, Notebook LM, and whatever other applications you use. But there's no good way to really unite them into one place. Zo is a private cloud computer that you can own, which means you can store all your data in the cloud and own that instance yourself. And you can also leverage AI agent on top of that so that you can use AI to manage your files, build automations, build apps, and store your code there. Unlike traditional applications that lock your data away, Zo gives you a persistent workspace where everything is stored, which means you have control over your own apps and files. And because it's a cloud computer, you can access it anywhere, including sending and receiving text messages, which is one of my favorite features. And there are other features like email, and of course the ability to vibe code directly on the machine and have custom build personas so that you can make your computer more personalized. Try out Zoe today and they're always on computer that you can use to simplify your computer needs. Link in the description below. Okay, so the question is this, how does everything we talked about in terms of model depreciation graphics cards depreciation schedule, supply and demand cycle all have to do with Core Reef's insolvency crisis. This is where things start to look really tricky. Core Reef is on a debt schedule. In the process of expanding their infrastructure, Core Reef racked up more than $14 billion in debt. And you might say, well, is $14 billion that bad? I mean, look at Core Reef's growing revenue. Surely their revenue growth will cover their debt, right? Let's look at their debt situation a bit closer. The blended average in their $14 billion of debt has an interest rate at around 10%, which means their interest payment alone eats away at their margin. But more importantly, if you look at the maturity of these debts in terms of when they're due, the majority of them are due in the next four years, which puts a tremendous pressure on one thing. And that one thing is how fast they can build their data centers. If they face any delays in their data center construction, which they already have, their ability to secure revenue is at a huge risk. So even if Core Reef can secure $6.3 billion extra revenue from Nvidia, while it could possibly buy them more time, it still relies on Core Reef finishing the data center since the deal is Nvidia having the obligation to buy unused compute, not unfinished compute. But aside from Core Reef's data center build out, 
Coral Reef's unit costs still puts them at a negative $110 million each quarter, and growth could potentially harm them by putting them further into the red. And maybe if they paid off large portions of the debt by removing this $300 million in interest payment alone, they could actually start to see positive earnings. All of this still points to their ability to finish building out their data centers in time. And sadly, Coral Reef recently announced that they are facing up to 60 days in delay in construction of their data center in Texas due to the weather. And delays like this are critically bearish when it comes to Coral Reef's ability to pay off their debt in time. So does this mean it's game over for Coral Reef? Keep in mind that none of what's being said in this video is a financial advice. This is just my opinion on the matter, which should be taken with a grain of salt. I think Coral Reef can easily convince their debt holders to adjust their financing term in Coral Reef's favor. If you tantalize them with the growing demand for AI compute, where we go from 4 gigawatts in 2024 to 123 gigawatts projected by 2035, pairing with the fact that even if the debt holders force liquidations of the assets, the residual value in graphics cards that they will get likely will be very little. I think much like Carvana did their restructuring of their debt, Coral Reef could possibly do something similar. And the AI industry at this point in 2026 is still yet unproven and pulling the plug in this year just seems too early. Another possible route that Coral Reef could take is by diluting their shares to bring in more equity to keep their heads above the water, or even doing some kind of asset rotation to sell all their hardware to liquidate them for debt repayment. But this will likely barely make up for the $14 billion that they owe in the next five years. And in the event that Coral Reef does become insolvent in 2026, the contagion will likely spread across the entire industry. And despite Coral Reef's precarious method that they've chose to scale their business, it's really in our best interest that Coral Reef makes through this year well so that the AI can really be given the chance to unleash in our economy. What do you think?